If you read 2 Chronicles 7, 14, turn in your Bibles there this morning. It's right there in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. He says, if my people will humble themselves. Let me stop right there. If my people, he ain't talking about the world. Don't you think that Wall Street's going to humble themselves? Don't you think Congress is going to humble itself? Don't you think these politicians are going to go for the floor? They're all fighting to get in the highest seat. I mean, think about it. We're in a world pandemic crushing disease and you got men jockeying who's going to be in the White House. They, they ought to just take a break till this thing's done because what's going on is foolishness when we're dealing with something so powerful that could take a nation, a world, take a, a country like Italy and snuff it right out. We need to realize we are not dealing with the hand of man. We are dealing with the hand of God. And he says, if my people, the church, will humble themselves. First stage of moving God is right here. If you and I, if you and I will humble ourselves, it's the first stage. It's the first stage. Humble yourself. Humble yourself is the first stage of moving. How many of you want to move God? You're sitting there in your homes today. I ask the question, do you want to move God? Do you want to move God in your house, in your home, your family, your finances, your whole life, this nation, every city, every hamlet? Are you saying, God, move, move God? Well, here's what moves God. When God says, humble yourself. I looked at something. Lucifer lifted himself and he fell. Jesus humbled himself and God exalted him. How many of you know, what a contradiction. Lucifer, uh, he, he rose up. He rose up and exalted himself and God threw him onto the earth. You see, when God threw him on the earth, he ended up with his face stuck in the dirt. Sounds like Daniel. God has a way of getting your face down in the dirt. Dirt is humanity. James 4.10 tells us to humble ourselves and God will exalt us. I want you to hear this today. This fast is about us doing something that breaks our heart that might delight his heart. Oh, God, break my heart that your heart would be delighted. Father, I thank you for that. Remember, Daniel fell on his face and became dumb. Some of us are too smart. We're too arrogant. We're too smart for our own good. And we need to put ourselves in a position that we can get so down in humility, not depressed, not under any depression at all. I'm talking willfully. The Bible says that you have to humble yourself. You see, God's humiliating people. They got a brand new car, can't afford it. They can't pay for it. They got a brand new house, can't keep the mortgage payment. Some people, you know, go around bolstering about their new outfit and have nowhere to wear it. We need to realize something. God can humble us, but he's not doing that. He's humiliating us. And he's waiting for us to humble ourselves. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God in due time will exalt you. How many of you say, Lord, I need to put myself under the hand of God? I just want to say this. The hand of God is that hand ministry of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. That's what I believe is the mighty hand of God. Do you know that when God started the church in Acts chapter 13 in Antioch, that one thing they did was when they began to go out, they fasted and God said, separate unto me uh, uh, Barnabas and, and, and Paul. He was called Saul, but separate unto me these two men. And have you know when they went to go out, they fasted and prayed again. And the Holy Ghost said, send them out. We need to realize God sets the government of his church in order when people are fasting and praying. And I want you to hear what he did in the Antioch church. He sent out apostles and elders. And I want, to hear, I want you to hear something. There's a lot. People worry about fake Christianity. I've said it here many, many times. Some of you that go to this church and are watching, you've heard me say, I'm not worried about fake news. I'm worried about fake Christians. 
and especially fake leaders. People that want a title, want to be honored, but they have nothing in them to sacrifice and to give up for others to be touched by God. That must change and will change in this current climate. Now listen a little further. Psalm 183 verse 6 says, The Lord knows the proud from afar off. God said, I know the proud, but he says, I, you're talking about six feet between people? God says, I keep my distance from the proud. We worry about getting close to somebody. We might get the coronavirus. Okay, well, you can do all that, but I want you to know God said, I'm going to keep my distance from you that live in pride. He said, I'm just going to step back. He says it right here in Psalm 138. God keeps his distance from the proud. Even nations, he holds them at bay and he holds them off because of their pride. And oh, you don't have to worry, Mr. President, about China. God can deal with China. You don't have to worry about these nations because God is actively working in the world today. You see, God decided to step down and begin to interfere in the affairs of man. Watch this, Psalm 35, verse 13. Even nations, he holds them off because of pride. Oh, I want you to get there with me. David says, I humbled myself with fasting. (laughs) David said, I humbled myself. That word there, the soul struggles with fasting. He said, I humbled myself with fasting. That means your mind, your will, and emotions have to be struggling with this thing. And what do you say by that? Well, the mind is what I think. The, and, and then the uh, uh, will is what I want. And then the emotions is what I need. Have you know those three areas are consuming our lives till they've eaten us up. Every day you rise up. It's about what I need. I got to do what I want to do. And how many know God says that you're going to have to struggle at this season until you decide to tell your soul that you're going to be like David and he's going to humble yourself with fasting until God restores himself back to you. It's time for the presence of God to come back upon God's people in such a way that we fear God and that we love God. And God's using this time for us, Rock City Church, and many others that are listening, this time of fasting is for us. Now watch this. Did you know, I mentioned it earlier, there's a nerve <laughs> called the vagus ner- nerve. Isn't that funny? It's called the vagus, the vagus nerve. I mean, you know we got a vagus, we know about vagus, right? I mean, you know everything in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, let me just tell you. There's a nerve called the vagus nerve that is connected from the stomach to the brain. It's connected from the stomach to the brain. Are you hearing me? And and you can look it up. And uh, it actually is the biggest nerve in the body. 500 uh, million neurons connecting itself to this cord to your brain. That's why the war goes on in your stomach because your stomach craves and wants and tells your brain you need that extra piece of pie. And that's why fasting is getting things reordered so that your brain is talking to your stomach, not your stomach talking to your brain. Say, Lord, let there be a holy reversal in my life that my brain tells my stomach be quiet instead of my stomach telling my brain I want something. Can you hear that? When Israel used to celebrate and still does, celebrate Yom Kippur, the day of atonement for their sins, did you know it requires a response from God's people to afflict, it says, their souls. It means to humble themselves. This meant to the Jew that they would do without food. To this day, they practice that at Yom Kippur when they come to that September date and they begin to come and, and, and they, they are repenting for the sin of the year, what they do is they humble themselves. They do without food for a season, a period, so they can say that they have put themselves before God and letting God do something in them. 
Now, I want you to look at this and how this ends, Ezra chapter 8. If I could spend just hours with you today, I would try to do that because this portion of Scripture is so profound. It is in the book of Ezra. Will you go there with me? I'm reading out of the New King James Version because it really says it the best. The New King James Version really, really lays it out well. In uh, Ezra chapter 8, and I want you to look at it with me. Now, let me set the story for you before I tell you which verse. Ezra was given the task to bring Israel from Babylon to, to back to Israel. And, and you'll read it in a minute. And what was happening was they, they gathered the people. They were leaving Babylon. How many know one day we're coming out of captivity? Can you say amen? And, and as they were coming out of captivity... Uh, uh, they were instructed by God through Ezra that they were to go on this journey and that it was going to be a treacherous journey. There were thieves and there were uh, robbers and there were all kinds of, of wicked people and armies along the way that they were going to face these people and they had to learn how to navigate and how to order this path so they could avoid those things. Now watch this. If you read in verse 21, then I proclaimed a fast. <laughs> he gets instruction. God tells him what he's going to do. He goes to the temple. You can read it. He goes there. He brings all the heads of the families together who returned with Ezra. They all came together. And then he says, I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might, what? That we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. How many of you know they're getting ready to move and Ezra says, oh God, I'm going to declare a fast. And as I fast, uh, I'm going to humble myself. And the people of Israel did that before God because they were seeking the right way, the strategy, the plan. Oh God, let the president, let the doctors, let the scientists begin to hear God and begin to turn towards you, God, and let those that have become the counsel to these people begin to counsel them in holy counsel so that fasting and prayer can bring guidance. And God, you will guide them in the right way. God, guide the nations by the humility of men that will fast and pray to Almighty God. Verse 22, for I was ashamed, oh, I love this. I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying this, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath, the other hand, are against those who forsake him. Don't you hear this? Ezra said, you know, it's almost like David when he was about ready to fight Goliath and Saul said, why don't you put on this armor? Ezra says, you know what? I'm not going to trust, uh, some will trust in chariots, some will trust in horses, but he said, I'm going to remember the Lord. I'm going to trust in my God. I'm not going to trust in the soldiers. I'm not going to trust uh, in all of the escorts uh, of horsemen and strong uh, strength. He said, I'm going to trust in God. I say to Rock City Church uh, and to those listening, we need to not trust in the hand uh, of man, but reach out uh, and the hand of God's mercy will come back to us uh, and restore us again uh, if we'll hear him. And he says, the hand of our God is upon all those for good. Have you say, Lord, I want the hand of grace uh, that's for good to me. But Lord, uh, the hand, it says, of wrath uh, was against those who forsook you. Oh, God. And so what did they do? Even now, again, so they fasted in verse 23 and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayers. Oh God, may you answer the prayers of the people of God right there today. 
as we listen to this portion, it's already played out. We, as so we fasted and entreated, humbled ourselves, uh, and God answered our prayer. You know, Second Chronicles tells us again that if we pray, if we humble ourselves, the second thing was you got to pray. So the, 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 the key here to move God is in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Number one, we just talked about humility. we got to humble ourselves. Number two, I just gave it to you. When they prayed, when they humbled themselves and prayed, God said, I'll heal your land. God said, if you turn your face towards me I'll, 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 and, and not desire my hands, he said, I'll, I'll heal, I'll heal your land. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this message strengthens and encourages you to be all God has called you to be. You can support Rock City Church by giving online through the links in the description or by visiting our giving page at giver.cc. Join us for our next live stream on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 1030 a.m. And remember, our prayer room and prayer line are always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For prayer, call our 24-hour prayer line at 410-882-2689.